Hi there. Well, I'd really like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided since my last video. Uh, and in particular, those who commented on um, stub drills and alternative methods of um, using a stub drill. Um, and also thanks to uh, Gary, a.k.a. Creepy013, as he's known uh, on his channel. Um, Gary recently made a, a, very, a very, very nice Stuart beam engine. And uh, he also acquired some uh, really nice little oilers for the uh, main bearings. Um, and Gary's provided me information in terms of where to get those from. So I've just ordered some um, off RDG Tools in the UK. So hopefully they'll arrive shortly. And what I'll do in the description, I'll uh, put a link to Gary's channel uh, for anybody who's interested in uh, making a Stuart Beam engine. Now in this video, what I'm going to be doing is machining the uh, crank, uh, the crankshaft and the crank pin for the Stuart half beam. Okay, so there are three parts provided in the kit. There's um, a piece of cast iron here for the crank, a piece of mild steel bar for the crankshaft and um, I think that's a piece of silver steel for the crank pin. Now the strange thing with this is the, the crankshaft needs to be 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and they've provided a piece of mild steel bar that's half an inch in diameter so it actually means that I've got to bring this down to length and then I've got to machine this down which um, seems a bit sort of like crazy really um, so what I've done is I've just gone and bought a piece of mild steel bar that's already 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter so all I need, will need to do with this is bring it down to size lengthwise and then machine the end. But what I'll do first of all is I'll start machining the, the crank. Now it needs tidying up with a, a file. Um, but once I've done that, I'll put it in the uh, three jaw chuck I think and I'll face this edge off here. Okay, so I've uh, just put the crank in this uh, three jaw chuck. And I'm holding it on the large boss and I've just put this dial gauge on just to make sure that it's reasonably straight. And it's there or thereabouts. Now I've calculated that the width of this is round about 120 thou over size. So what I'll do first of all is I'll face this edge off here and I'll take 60 thou off it. Okay, so I'll take light cuts around about 5 thou at a time uh, with the aim to take 60 thou off in total and I'll turn at around about 250 I think. And for the final cut, I'll use the fine feed on the cross slide.
This will take a long time. Well, I've managed to get a really nice finish on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to centre drill it on the lathe. And then I think I'm going to do the drilling and reaming of the holes on the mill. So I'll take the three, uh, three jaw chuck off the lathe and attach it to the milling table. Okay, so I centre drilled on the lathe. Um, now the reason I'm not drilling and reaming on the lathe is because I'll need to drill and ream the other hole. And I think I've got more chance of getting them both parallel if I do them on the mill. Because if I do that on the lathe, I'm still going to have to do the other one on the mill, if you get my drift. So, anyway, um, I've just bolted the three-jaw chuck onto the table. And I've just centred. So that's perfectly spot on. I've zeroized the DRO for the X and Y axis. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'm going to open it up with a slightly bigger centre drill. And uh, then I've um, got a, a stub drill, a 6mm stub drill, which I'll drill through with. And then I'll open it up to 23 64ths and then I'll ream to 3 8 7 inch. So based on uh, some of the advice I received when I did my last video, I decided to uh, buy some stub drill bits. I got these from um, UK drills, so I don't know how good they are, but uh, anyway, we'll give it a try. So this is a six millimeter stub drill. So unfortunately my reamer is so long that it won't fit in the um, normal chuck, so uh, I've taken the chuck off and I'm, I'm using a collet. Turn around 440. Okay, so I've just moved the x-axis 11 sixteenths of an inch and uh, I've uh, just centre drilled there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this uh, little stub drill here, another one that I got off uh, UK Drills. Uh, this is a 3.2mm drill bit. Uh, I'll drill with that, then I'll drill 4.5mm, then I'll ream to 3 sixteenths. But I'll do all that off camera. So I've uh, just clamped the crank to the table. And there's a round about uh, 69, 70 thou to come off this top to bring it down to um, 3 eighths of an inch. I'll cut in uh, 10 thou increments.
Well that's worked out okay, so uh, I need to repeat the same process for the smaller boss and that needs to be a quarter of an inch in width. Well the crank seems to have turned out okay, but it's really difficult cleaning up the insides there. But uh, I'll continue to uh, use various methods. Now the crank shaft is, I'm going to make it out of this piece of uh, 7 16 mile steel bar. And I've cut it close to length, which is 4 and 3 quarters of an inch long. I've just marked it up there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in the lathe face that end off to size uh, like I've done this side actually and uh, I'll probably just centre drill it just for looks and then it needs to be turned down So now I need to reduce this end by uh, a sixteenth of an inch, so effectively I need to take a thirty-second of an inch off it uh, to get it down to three-eighths of an inch to fit in the crank. And I need to cut it to a depth of also three-eighths of an inch. So what I've done is um, I've set the dial gauge up on the carriage, zeroed it. Um, I've got a carriage stop there, so if you look at the gauge here, I need to turn this down um, 0.375 of an inch. So that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.375, and it's up against the carriage stop now. So the way I'm going to cut this is I'm just going to do a manual feed on the carriage like that. Now to take um, one thirty second of an inch off here um, I'll need to uh, move the cross slide in um, by 0 0.0312 which is 0.79 millimetres so that comes to round about 39 increments on here on this dial. Actually I'll use the fine feed on the carriage
think I've just got about seven thou to go. So what I'm going to do is just take a few thou off at a time and then test fit the crank because I'm looking for a really nice sort of tight fit. Uh, but I'll do all that off camera. Well, that's worked out very well. I'm very happy with that. A nice tight fit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lock tight it on and then I'm going to drill through, uh, I think it's 3 30 seconds of an inch to pin it. So for the pin I need to drill to a depth of around about 0.3 of an inch. Well that seemed to go okay, which makes a change, and uh, while I was making it, uh, the oil has arrived in the post. So they should look really nice on the model. The only thing I'm not too sure about is the hole in the top is really fine. So I'm not so sure how you fill them up, but maybe somebody could uh, provide us with some help on that. <laughs> maybe Gary could, I don't know. But um, also I've, I've ordered um, some metal, um, some mild steel sheet, five millimeters thick, to put the pedestal on and also to put the base on some legs. Now, unfortunately the, the eBay supplier let me down and uh, sent me totally the wrong things. Um, so I've managed to find another supplier, so hopefully that will arrive in the next couple of days. Um, and the idea will be to, man to, to actually do that in the next video, to start building it up from the base. Now in terms of the, uh, the crank and the crankshaft, um, I, I did struggle a bit with cleaning it up between the bosses. Now, I've got a little Proxon tool with some you know, tools that you put on it. Um, maybe I need to be looking for some alternative little tools that can uh, sort of clean that up a bit better. But it's not too bad. Uh, but anyway, I hope you like the results so far and I hope to see you later. <laughs>